2016 all over again. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Power Five. We have started in the Pac-12. We've run through 11 of the 12. We land at the gold standard, USC football. Of course, two years ago, they won a Rose Bowl after getting off to a rough one-in-three start when Sam Darnold was inserted into the lineup and came of age. And they were arguably one of the best teams in the nation at season's conclusion. They have another quarterback situation on their hands with a lot of inexperience. Let's first talk about their head coach, Clay Helton. How good is this guy? You will get arguments on both ends of the spectrum. I hear from all sorts of USC fans that defend him as being a coach who has won a Pac-12 championship for the first time in forever, meaning uh, the second to the last season of Pete Carroll's reign, and also a Rose Bowl, of course, to conclude that aforementioned 2016 season, and uh, a red-hot team at that juncture. The recruiting has been exceptional. This uh, roster should be in good place uh, for the upcoming years. But, on the other hand, despite a 20-3 and run, so USC has won 20 of its last 23 games. So that includes 11-3 and this past season. They won the final nine games of 2016, of course. But when they lose, they lose to the elite, and they lose in a big way. They were crushed on the road by Notre Dame 49-14 to at a point in which they were very much in the running for a college football playoff appearance. Ohio State had drubbed them in the Cotton Bowl. The, the offense was non-existent 24 to 7 and uh, obviously the previous season before they went on that nine game winning streak they did not show up against uh, Alabama whatsoever in a nationally televised big hyped game to open the season lost at Stanford lost at Utah and that ultimately cost them a shot at the Pac-12 championship all right let's talk quarterback And it's Matt Fink, it's Jack Sears. They both had lackluster performances in spring ball. Uh, Might be playing better in the fall. Who knows? We're only 12 days away from the season, and uh, we are up against it. JT Daniels, though, is the guy who is looked upon as the savior, despite being at an age in which he could be playing and preparing for his final season of high school football and was not able to step on campus early in the spring and get acclimated to uh, USC football, but basically did everything else that he could possibly do in regards to coming out to practice, working out uh, at the facility, watching film, uh, meeting with coaches to get himself prepared to make a run at this quarterback job. And we hear reports uh, from USC beat writers and elsewhere that JT Daniels has looked the part in August, and USC fans want to hear that because by far he is the highest ceiling out of these guys. Fink and Sears are limited despite being highly recruited coming out of high school. This offense, it's it's very strange because they lose all sorts of star power, and of course Sam Darnold at the top of the list, the number three pick in the draft, gone. Ronald Jones, gone to the NFL, as well as Deontay Burnett. You're talking about a 4,000-yard passer, a 1,500-yard rusher, and a 1,000-yard receiver. Gone. When does that happen? But when you look at the USC offensive production, it was very uneven in 2017. A ton of negative plays and really poor production in the red zone. So maybe things work out a little bit better. Sometimes uh, the, the best players don't always make a cohesive unit. And USC is trying to build that right now. They've got the most talent in the Pac-12 South Division, no question about that. Still, despite the losses, best talent, but the best talent doesn't always equal the best team or the best results, as we saw two years ago. Stephen Carr at uh, running back, basically as good as RJ, uh, you would guess. Uh, But he's been injured, and uh, even during the offseason, has had issues with a herniated disc and also a foot injury coming back from last season. Akis Hedrick Ware with 247 yards, 5 yards per carry. Uh, For USC fans, they'd like to see him carry the ball 8 or 10 times a game. But if Carr continues to be injury-plagued, then Ware is thrown into the lineup more often. The offensive line should be decent. It's been not great in recent years. We saw the performance in the Cotton Bowl. Toa Lobadon leads the offensive front. Chris Brown's at left guard. He's uh, probably the second-best player. 
At wide receiver, we mentioned uh, the loss of Deontay Burnett, who showed up in that Rose Bowl two years ago with three touchdowns and a huge effort, and then carried that into just a uh, tremendous uh, work ethic uh, throughout the spring to make himself an elite wide receiver, and the numbers showed it last season. Gone. Tyler Vaughn's 57 catches, five touchdowns. Michael Pittman, 23 receptions, two scores. Those are the two top guys coming back. USC needs a third receiver, number three productive guy. They have plenty of stars next to the individuals who will be vying for that job, but will somebody step up and produce? They've got four tight ends who are really good, led by Tyler Petit and Daniel Imator Bebebe. All right defensively. It's been a decent defense in recent years. It was a good defense in 2017, but not great and and certainly not good against the run. They got pounded against a really good run teams, i.e. Notre Dame with a 49 points on the board and Josh Adams running all over this defense. And the defensive line again in 2018 is going to be thin in a weak spot. This has not been addressed in recruiting very well. They have to have a healthy Porter Gustin who showed out huge in 2016 with a, a 13 tackles for loss, and he missed most of last season. Uh, Christian Rector, defensive end, is by far the best player up front on the defensive line. 11 and a half tackles for loss and seven and a half sacks. Cam Smith, of course, it seems like he's been at USC forever at inside linebacker. That's because he showed up with a three interception game on national TV against Utah uh, as a freshman. He had 112 stops and 11 tackles for loss. And John Houston, also a really good player on the USC defense. The secondary thin at corner, although Iman Biggie Marshall is one of the very best in the business and certainly their number one guy. The safety position is stacked. Uh, Marvell tells a really good player, 85 tackles, three interceptions, and also uh, Eugene Harris, who had 58 stops and three picks. The special teams were a sore spot last year. They should be better. Uh, just basically because they have too much talent not to be better. Uh, Again, I go back to 2016 because of the schedule and because of a quarterback situation with inexperience and because of a developing roster. 2016, they lost 3 of 4 to start the season, then they went on the run. Uh, 2018, they start with another difficult schedule in September. Road games at Texas and Stanford. So, of course, they could barely get by the Longhorns at the Coliseum with Darnold and Deontay Burnett and Ronald Jones Jr. And a double overtime win over the Horns. They go to Austin in September this year. So, I'm not expecting good things in September for USC. Uh, At Utah, that is the biggest threat that USC faces on the road this season. Impact will play a game at Utah. That could decide the division. Check out my Utah video. No Washington on the schedule. So that gives them the edge over the Utes and the other teams uh, that they're going to challenge with in the Pac-12 South Division. Notre Dame's at home. Notre Dame's a better team right now in August than USC is. But come November, could be much different at the Coliseum. I like USC to basically go head-to-head with Utah. Same record. But even despite the scheduling advantage that USC has and a talent advantage, I think Utah has the pieces in play from day one over USC. They got to go to Utah. Utes win at home. That's the tiebreaker. Utah goes to the Pac-12 championship game. USC splits the two games against Texas. Most likely, I'm thinking they lose at Austin early. They're a much better team, and they play a tremendous game at home in the Coliseum against a Notre Dame team that could be playing for a college football playoff in November. They win one of those two, most likely the Texas loss, the Notre Dame win at home, and they finish 6-3, and 8-4. and four. That's the USC record with a tremendous team by season's end with JT Daniels, a quarterback, and big things expected for 2019. Like, comment, and subscribe. Want to see your USC prediction in the comments section. And also remember our mailing list here at Mark Rogers TV. Just send your name and email address to Mark Rogers TV at Gmail for all the facts and trends and stats that you'll want each and every week of the college football season, starting with week one, right here at Mark Rogers TV, a voice of college football.